Backtrack, Kali Linux, and a Raspberry Pi. It could be a match made in heaven. Let's begin. Our objectives for you and I in this micro nugget are really simple. It's to be able to describe what in the world is this Linux distribution called Backtrack or Kali. What is a Raspberry Pi? How do we actually integrate the two together and why we would want to? And then a quick demonstration of Kali on a Pi in action. So let's begin with a brief discussion about the history of Backtrack. Backtrack is a Linux distribution and you can download it. You can download it and run it from a CD. You can install it to your, com your computer. And the question is why? Why would anyone want to download and use Backtrack as their Linux operating system? And the answer is because it comes with, as part of the distribution, hundreds and hundreds of attack tools. Now we don't, you know, officially call them attack tools. We could call them forensic tools or, you know, networking enumeration tools or penetration testing tools. But when you boil it all down, it's a hacker's dream come true. Tons and tons of tools and they do a terrific job at what they do. Over the years, Backtrack has evolved. So it started off as Backtrack 1 and then when Backtrack 2 and Backtrack 3, etc. In 2012, they came out with Backtrack 5, Release 3, and that's the end of Backtrack. What do you mean, Keith, that's the end of Backtrack? In March of 2013, they decided that the next version of Backtrack wasn't going to be called Backtrack. They changed some underlying things in the actual distribution. So with Kali Linux, which is effectively the next generation of Backtrack, we're not calling it Backtrack anymore, we're just calling it Kali Linux. And if you squint, the hundreds and hundreds of tools that we had in Backtrack, guess what? They're still present in Kali Linux. So with Kali Linux, it's still going to have the hundreds and hundreds of tools available, but there's going to be some better background support. Upgrades are going to be easier. The actual tools are going to be more compliant with the underlying operating system. So it's going to make for an overall better package. Our next objective was to identify what exactly is a Raspberry Pi and how does it taste? And the answer is, I don't know how it tastes because I haven't tried eating one. It's actually a computer. Here's a Raspberry Pi and it's small enough to fit in a person's pocket. Now, when you purchase it, you can purchase just the Raspberry Pi. You can purchase an optional plastic case and then you simply plug in. There's an Ethernet cable. There's an HDMI cable for video output. There's a micro B USB connector. That's how you power this computer and it has an audio port and other IOs as well. So this, my friend, is a Raspberry Pi and you can purchase one for well under $50 in the US. Now, when individuals normally would want to run, for example, Backtrack or Kali Linux, they're going to usually use a live CD or install it to a hard drive on a laptop so it's mobile. But one of the most amazing things that I think about the Raspberry Pi is that you can actually run Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. They have a special image at Kali.org. So we could go ahead and download that image. Of course, we'd have to have the physical Raspberry Pi. And what we would do is we would put that image on an SD card put that SD card into the Raspberry Pi, boot it up, which means plug in the micro B USB connector for power. And once it boots up, it's going to boot up to Kali Linux. And then my friend, the tools that we know and love instead of Kali Linux, we can now use them on this Raspberry Pi because it literally is running Kali Linux. Once I plugged the actual Raspberry Pi into the network, it got its own IP address via DHCP, and now I'm connected to it remotely via SSH, which is also on by default for the Raspberry Pi implementation of Kali. So from here, we can do things like IF config just to verify the IP addresses that are involved. I've also got X Windows support set up. If we were sitting right at the console with a keyboard, mouse, and video monitor attached, we could type in start X. That would start the X Windows graphical user interface. Because I'm remotely SSH to it, I've set up X Windows support. So if we do launch a graphical user interface type of application like Wireshark, it will go ahead and launch Wireshark, but it will bring it up in a separate window back at this host machine that's running the X Windows server. So here's an example of Wireshark. And if we wanted to capture all the traffic, we'd select the interface, click on start. And my friend, it would just start collecting data as if it was a laptop or some other bigger device that was running Kali Linux. In this micro nugget, we've learned that Backtrack and Kali Linux are Linux distributions that contain hundreds of penetration testing and hacking tools. We learned that a Raspberry Pi is a very small, affordable computer and that we can actually run Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. We also took a peek at running an application like Wireshark on Kali Linux that's running on a Raspberry Pi. I've had a lot of fun. I'm so glad you've joined me. 
I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.